If it was me, I'd start up a database. Every male baby what's born, stick him on it. And as soon as he'd done something wrong, cross-reference it, make 100% certain it was a correct match, then kill him. Yeah, well, there's definitely civil rights laws prevents that. Hi folks, I'm Ignati Vishnevetsky. And I'm Alex Dowd. Today we're talking about the nominees for Best Actress. Welcome to a very special Oscar edition of Film Club. All right, the nominees, let's hear them. Okay, let's see if I can do this. Uh, Meryl Streep for The Post. Francis McDormand for Three Billboards Outside Ebbing, Missouri. Margot Robbie for I, Tanya. Cersei Ronan for Lady Bird. And Sally Hawkins for The Shape of Water. It's Saoirse, but that's good. That's close enough. <laughs> it's close enough. I, I think Frances McDormand is seen as, as the front runner yeah. here. An actress who's had a, a pretty great career. Mm -hmm. And as is often the case with Best Actor, Best Actress, it's often a legacy thing as much as I think as it's a good else. role for her. I don't know. I mean, I think a lot of the reason that this movie works, despite the problems that we've, you and I have talked about on this mm -hmm. very show, uh, is because of her and because of just the, the amount of personality she pumps into this character and the amount of sort of grit she pumps into it. But what do you think about Sally Hawkins's? chances with this? Um, I don't think she'll win. I, I think, again, McDormand is, is the most likely choice here. Mm -hmm. I think that Hawkins does uh, quite a lot with a character. I mean, it's, it's, it's one of those acting challenges that the mm -hmm. Academy loves, you know, mm -hmm. take away something that this character might have. In this case, uh, she's playing this mute cleaning woman. Uh, who falls in love with a fish man. Um, and, but, you know, the, taking away her ability to deliver any dialogue, just taking away her voice, uh, does present a challenge for Hawkins that I think she rises to. I mean, I think it's a pretty radiant performance. I also think that one of the reasons that this movie kind of works, sort of in spite of itself in some ways, is that she gives this character some carnal desire. She gives her some dimension. We're not just watching a kind of impish, uh, you know, I mean, as written, the, I think that character could be uh, just sort of a, a, a fantasy imp of sorts. She grounds the character yeah. a bit. But um, to back to her a little bit, speak of legacy nominations, mm -hmm. we've got uh, Meryl Streep yeah. once again nominated for The Post, which I don't think is a very good film. I think it's one of Steven Spielberg's weaker films. Her performances, it's Fine. It's yeah, I don't think it's anything special. Nothing that we, I, I feel like she's being nominated for just streepdom. Yeah, for being Meryl <laughs> Streep and for being in this important movie about journalism, you know. Um, I think that uh, my issue with The Post and specifically with her character in it is that it sort of builds this pretty obvious drama of a uh, sort of crisis of conscience for her. Mm -hmm. That like anyone going into this the movie called The Post knows where this particular character is inching towards, you know? Does she, she side with the journalists who work for her that want, to, that, are, that are in favor of, of, of truth and, and, and doing truth to power? Or does she side with- uh, With people who are literally smoking cigars and just, <laughs> right. just counting the money. Right. Who's it going to be? <laughs> exactly. Um, so, I mean, she kind of has to play a conflict that feels pretty predetermined to me. I, she's got a good scene in the film that I like, a uh, scene with Bruce Greenwood, um, mm -hmm. who's playing Robert McNamara, um, where she comes to his house, and their their characters are, as, as the people who were in real life, knew, know each other quite well, mm -hmm. have traveled in the same social circles. There's this kind of scene where they're both very nervously talking around the subject, and she sort of keeps, she has, I think, her keys in her hand. And mm -hmm. I feel, but I feel almost like that scene is half in the sound design. It's the de yeah. decision to make the keys so incredibly loud on the soundtrack <laughs> rather than just kind of muffle them in there. That, that really builds up the tension. Yeah. Because I don't think she's one of the more interesting protagonists in Spielberg's work. No. One of the very few female protagonists. Yeah. I don't think he has really been one of his strengths. Yeah. Um, but Streep does fine work. Yeah. Um, well, what do you think of Margot Robbie and, and I, Tanya? I think it's it's the kind of performance you would expect to be nominated for an Oscar. Um, <laughs> it, that's that's pretty underhanded or, <laughs> or pretty backhanded, rather. I, I like Margot Robbie a lot, and she can be very very funny, which mm -hmm. she is, which she gets to be in this film as well. I guess it always comes down to the question of what do you value more in acting? Is it I mean, I'd hate to say volume, but mm -hmm. you know, just the 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 sheer energy, or is it just how far the person actually manages to take the performance? I mean, you look at something like, well, Saoirse Ronan in Lady Bird, mm -hmm. which I think is a very a very realistic portrayal of a teenager, yeah, um, which she manages to do quite a lot. I mean, one that I I loved that wasn't nominated, and I'm sure you did as well, is is Vicky Crepes, yeah, um, in Phantom Thread, sure. Uh, 
playing within a very, a, a much, I think, narrower emotional range than any other, uh, than any of the people who were actually nominated, but I think conveying so much about a character within that narrow band. Sure, and so much of acting, too, I think, is also about um, how you're, you're playing with your co-stars, you know, and, mm -hmm. and how you're reacting to what they're doing. Just being a scene partner with Daniel Day-Lewis in this case and, and sort of holding her own against him, against this, this mm -hmm. big volcanic talent, you know, uh, it was probably worthy of something. So I think that McDormand is probably going to win this. Mm -hmm. I think that the, the wind is kind of behind her back at this point. She's won a lot of the precursors. And I do think that there's something about that performance that's connecting with people, I think, maybe especially at this time. I mean, she's playing a mother who is... An angry mother taking on a corrupt system uh, that has sort of turned a blind eye to uh, to sexual assault. I mm -hmm. think that there's a very easy parallel that voters can draw between what she's doing in this movie and what's happening in, in Hollywood. And, and so the, you think it's definitely McDormand? I feel like it's mm -hmm. McDormand with maybe a Hawkins chance? Is, is how Possible. It's uh, I think it's going to be McDormand. Mm -hmm. yeah. But who would you like to see win? I would love to see Ronan win. I think, I, and I'm, I'm going to say that I, I agree with you. It's my favorite of the nominated performances. It's just such a, I just, it's such a vibrant, funny performance. It's so, uh, I think she just gets the self consciousness of youth mm -hmm. in a lot of ways, but she also understands that teenagers can, can contain multitudes, you know, and we just get to see so many sides of who Lady Bird is. And uh, I think it's also interesting that she, you know, we've seen Ronan graduate to adulthood in a sense. I mean, the last time she was nominated was for Brooklyn, where she was playing a grown up for the most part, and it's interesting to see her sort of uh, gracefully like, kind of pinwheel backwards into adolescence. And we, we talked about this when we talked about Laurie Metcalf, mm -hmm. who was nominated for this film, but I think part of what makes the both of those performances in Lady Bird really impressive as just a, from a technical st standpoint is the fact that it's a film of very short scenes, short exchanges. We're getting brief snippets of these characters. It's not like we're getting them in something like the post, which is relatively stagey, where scenes tend to be very, very long. You have this whole dynamic develop between characters over the course of several minutes. We're seeing two characters interact for 15 seconds at a time. Right. And we always have a sense of where these characters sort of are emotionally at this moment, even what's going on in their heads. I want you to be the very best version of yourself that you can be. What if this is the best version?